We're gonna install Claude code in the container today. That's gonna to let us control what it has access to. This will work in Windows, on a Mac, and on Linux. It'll also work with the IDE integrations and with GitHub. So I'll show you how to do both of those in a bit. All right, let's get started. So we have a couple of prerequisites here. One is Docker Desktop. So you need to download and install Docker Desktop. It's free for personal use. There's a button right on the page here to download for your OS. If you're wondering what the difference between ARM and AMD is, a typical Windows machine is is going to be the AMD 64 option, not ARM. So install this, open it up after it's done installing. Then for the IDE, I'm going to be using VS Code today. VS Code is a free IDE that works on all the major operating systems. This will also work with cursor. I haven't tried it with other IDEs. If you're on Windows, you can get VS Code from the Microsoft Store as well. And I'm going to put links to these things in the video description if you want a shortcut. And then we'll be ready to get started. So open up Docker Desktop. We're not going to be physically doing anything in here, but it does need to be running for this to work. So open it up and then open up VS Code. In VS Code, we need to add an extension. So go to your extensions icon in the left sidebar and search here for dev containers. So we need to install this extension. So just click the install button. It's super fast. Then go back to our explorer here. So we need to open up a workspace. You can use an existing workspace if you want to, or you can make a new one. So I'm going to make a folder for this and select it. So what this dev container extension does is you give it a template that tells it what to put in the container, then you start the container, and then you reopen your project folder in that container. So what we need to do is get or make that template. Anthropic already has one for us, and they actually recommend this as best practice to do. So we're going to use their template. So it is in Anthropic's GitHub. I'm gonna put a link to this in the video description. We're gonna download this and then take just the files that we need because there's some extra stuff in here that we don't want. So if you click on the green code button here and then go to download zip, that's going to download the files. Since this is a zip file, we need to extract it before we can use it. So I'm going to right click it, extract all, extract. And the files that we want are inside here in this .dev container folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this .dev container folder and I'm going to drag and drop it into our workspace in VS Code. So just drop it in like so. And it asks if we want to copy, so say copy folder. So I want to talk a little bit about what's in this dev container folder. So devcontainer.json is going to be the information about everything that gets built into the container. So if you want to change what extensions are available in there, you can do that here. It's also got your workspace name and workspace path information. The Docker file has some more configuration stuff. So it'll tell you what permissions and what bash commands Claude is able to use amongst other things. And then you have a firewall file. This firewall file is what is walling off your container from the internet. It has an exception in here already for local hosts. So if you're doing local app development, you don't need to add an exception for that here. But if you need to open up any ports, that would be here. This is relevant for MCPs. So if you're trying to use MCPs with Claude, you'll want to allow traffic on the domain that your MCP server is on. I'm gonna do a separate video on MCPs. So you can subscribe if you wanna be notified when that's ready. MCPs are a bit more involved and I wanted to keep this video short. So this is our template. Now we need to build our container. To do that, it's actually really easy. All you need to do is go to the little searchy menu up here and then do a, what's this character called? Little side carrot? I don't know. And search for dev containers in here and you want the option for reopen in container. What this will do is it'll attempt to open your current workspace in the container. Since the container doesn't exist, it knows that and it'll build it the first time it runs. So it has successfully built the container. It says press any key to close the terminal, so I'll do that. So you can see down here at the bottom that it is connected. If I then go and look at Docker Desktop, I can see that there's a container running now. Docker gives these like a random name. So I guess ours is called Nervous Heyrovsky. So you don't actually have to do anything in Docker Desktop. Whenever you open that folder in the container, it's going to automatically start your container in Docker Desktop for you. When you close VS Code, it automatically stops your container. Super convenient. So what about Claude Code? Let's open that up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is install the Claude Code extension. So that's gonna give you the IDE integration where it shows you the diffs between what the file was before and what the file will look like after Claude edits it. So under extensions, if you search for Claude code. So Claude code for VS code is what you want. It says that this is automatically installed, but it does not automatically install in the containers. You could probably put this into the template that builds the container. I tried to do that and didn't have a lot of luck. This works for me. So I'm going to install this in the dev container. So now if I go back here and open up a terminal, so it's in the view menu minus collapsed because I have everything super zoomed in. So view 
terminal. If I type Claude here, hit enter. Now we get to set up Claude code. So choose your mode, log in. I'm using the $20 a month subscription and that works fine for what I need it for. So it's gonna ask to open up a link and say yes, authorize it, and then go back to VS Code. So authorize, enter to continue, and now you get the warning message. Claude Code can make mistakes, okay. Set up the terminal. I'm gonna use recommended settings. Trust the files in this folder, yes. The IDE integration, if you do forward slash IDE at this point, if you've installed the extension, it will recognize that you're using Visual Studio Code. If you don't install the extension, in my experience, it doesn't show up here. So do one to select. And now it says IDE connected. So I'm going to have it create an ultra basic app for us so we can see what's going on and verify that we can open it in a browser. So here's where you can see the IDE integration. I've got two panes up here. I can push accept to accept the proposed changes. It's done, um, but it didn't actually make an app it just made an html page so i'm going to tell it to actually make a proper server here so you can see that it says offline while it's running that's normal and um, that's because it's in the container except that so our app is ready but it didn't start the server so i'm going to exit claude and then start our server so it says our application is available i'm going to open it and there's our app let's talk about what's going on with the files and how to navigate around in this so Everything that happens in this container will also show up where the original folder was on my computer. So if I open that up, here's all of our files, here's the server, and then here's the web page. So now let's double check and make sure that we have walled off everything on our computer and limited it to the project folder. So if I run Claude and then give it a path that is not the project folder and see if it can access it. So for example, that path, it cannot access the rest of Windows. That's what we want. If we need it to access some particular thing, we can put it in our project folder. So occasionally you'll need to get to files that are one level above this project folder. So that's still in the container, but for example, like the Claude config stuff. So you can just open that. So if I go to file open folder, it's gonna drop down a list of the folder structure of this container. The Claude stuff is going to be in home under node and dot Claude. So if I click OK on that, you can see these files here. When you want to go back, you can just open and then use the two dots to go up a level, up a level again, and then scroll down to your workspace. So that's where your project files were and click OK there. So now we're back to where we were and it actually has the history here in the terminal. That's kind of nice. This totally works with GitHub. You can use it right through the UI in VS Code. So there's this source control tab here. So right now my project folder is not a repo. So I'm going to initialize it and it's saying it's unsafe. That's just because I haven't told it that Yes, this is my folder. So I'm just gonna click on manage unsafe repositories, open the workspace, and now we're into the normal UI. So you can either publish this from here or you can create a blank repo in the cloud and then link it to a specific repo. So the thing is, is if you publish directly, if you remember me mentioning when we were talking about the dev container file, it's going to create a repo with the folder name in that template file. So if I just directly publish from here, it tries to use that folder name, which was workspace as the name of the repo, which is very not specific, right? So if you want to, you can create your own repo in GitHub and then link it to that. So in GitHub, I can create new New, new repo, give it a name. I'm going to make it private and create. So once this is created, I can go back to VS Code and from the search bar up here, do the little side carrot and search for git add remote. And from here, it lists all of my repos. So I can select this one that it has created. It wants a remote name. So this is usually going to be origin. Now we're connected to that remote repo. We can commit our changes. It asks me if I want to stage. I'm going to say yes. It's going to pop a commit message file. So you need to put a message in here and then hit the checkbox. And now we have the option to publish. Now, if we check GitHub, refresh this, we can see all of our files here. I want to make a point to mention here that if you are working with MCPs that are at the project level, definitely add a git ignore file and have it ignore your MCP JSON file that has your credentials in it. We'll go over how to do that in the MCP video, but I wanted to do a super brief overview of GitHub because that versioning is really important when you're having AI go and do a bunch of stuff on its own. So this container aspect is really where people will use the dangerously skip permissions command with Claude. So that lets Claude go off and do things on its own. So if you're not familiar, let me just open up a terminal real quick. So the command here is Claude and then a double dash dangerously skip permissions with single hyphens between. 
but tells you it should only be used in a sandbox container, which is what we have that has restricted internet access, which we do have. We can accept and now we can run Claude and let it go off and do stuff on its own. If we close VS Code and reopen it, it will restart the container. So if I close this, reopen, you can see that it's connecting and it's ready to go. If you wanna disconnect this, just click the menu in the bottom left, scroll to the bottom and say close remote connection. If you wanna reopen it, you can reopen it from your recents here or just open up your project folder and then choose the reopen in container option from the menu up here. So we've got cloud code working in our container. There are other methods to do this with various other tools, but this was the most straightforward method that I have found. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.